Good morning, guys, and um, I just wanted to share some videos with y'all and some pictures of my favorite morning times up here in East Texas. And this was this morning on um, 120 of 12, me sitting on my front porch having a cup of coffee, and uh, this is herd of deer that comes right by me every day, pretty much. And God bless them for doing it. Yeah, I enjoy watching them come by. And every once in a while, a big old buck will come chasing them through, and I see some wild hogs every now and then. <laughs> it's an everyday occurrence. It's quite a show they put on for me up here. Now, this is where I live here on the lake on Sam Rayburn. And what we're about to go to is the ranch that I manage, and it's down in Liberty County. And here, you'll see, that, I mean, it had to be five, six, seven, eight does and yearlings come across the path there. I thought I saw one little young buck with him, but I couldn't really get a good picture of him or video, so I let him go. And, and that's the way this morning was, and I'm glad I could share it with y'all. Over here on this next video, we're going to um, move on down to the ranch, and this is some deer I come across uh, at a feeder. And I was real close to these deer, and when you're looking, you might be able to even see that it's real windy. And these were a little more wild deer than these here in my community, and they get a little spooky. But I don't know how many there are ten. But here you see that there's a feeder here, and um, this pack of does they're gonna come in in yearlings, and they're gonna feed, and hey, they they get a little spooky. You know, and you can kind of hear my camera in the background, and the deer could kind of hear it too. But if you watch the leaves of the trees and the bushes, you see the wind was blowing pretty good, and it always makes these deer a little spooky. And I'm real close to them; I'm within 10 yards at some points. And um, you know, I was really fortunate to get to get this video. You can see the first one starting to sneak up through here, and I mean. Uh, you know, pay attention to how these deer can disappear by just standing still. But they definitely come on in here and want to be sure they got them something to eat. You see, they could even hear me zoom the camera, try and get a better shot at them. But there's a good little herd of them here. I sit there a morning or two before this, and I counted 16 does and yearlings. Some of the does had one yearling, some of the does had three yearlings. I couldn't believe it, but hey, maybe there's a mix up and an overrun of numbers there, but be it as it may, it sure is pleasant sometimes uh, up here on the old Mo show in the morning time, getting to wake up, watch all the wildlife do its thing and being a part of it and being a part of the cycle that is life. And hey guys, I love it. it uh, I'd love to share it with y'all too. You know, I don't mind. I'm an outdoor guide. I love taking people fishing. I could take people do a little hunting here and there. I could hunt the lake beds. I can hunt this ranch. It's about 700 acres. And uh, I try to keep it well managed. And there's been some quality bucks taken off of it, and mostly by me. But, you know, I keep them fed up. I, I keep them does where I know they're going to be and so therefore I know the bucks are going to be and I just you know hope y'all enjoyed this video and, and seeing how wild deer in a, a wild wilderness area behave as compared to deer in a community per se you know deers in your communities are almost pets they're like protected pets but please don't ever go try to pet them. You'll have a very serious consequence on that, more likely than not. Because they're not pets, they're wild animals. But they behave and are treated, and it kind of seems that way. These deer are not pets at all. If they knew I was there, they'd be so far out of there so fast. <laughs> it's not even funny. And um, even the feeder doesn't make them pets. And I'll tell you all, here in East Texas, you know, having a feeder is really the only way you can properly manage a herd because like you see here I'm getting to see the whole nursery 
of what's coming up every different age class of deer that's coming up through there and therefore I can watch and see which ones are are different age class which ones are bigger lesser healthier not healthy but I'll say this about does it's important that you take does during the hunting season and believe it or not the best time to take them is on opening day and if they have a yearling with them take the doe and that yearling because if you take the doe and not the yearling the yearling's probably not going to make it um, you could take just the yearling not the doe but here's what a biologist explained to me one time you want to take all different age classes of your does you don't want to have just all young does running around or all old does running around you need a good mixture in between and you need to limit them to some extent to let your bucks grow bigger and have a more desirable hunt and hunting experience and I gave that some thought and, and I'd come up with a few things of my own about that and the one about them you know harvesting a doe and a yearling on opening day is a great way to help manage your herd. Taking a doe and a yearling in the muzzle loading season, the two weeks after season, a great way to manage your herd. And so, you know, I just wanted to share some of these things with you. Um, and man, these deer, as you can see, they're spooky. <laughs> in and out in and out I'm not sure how many of them there are I think there's about eight or ten At some points you'll see different ones coming in there's stragglers or what have you uh, hell, there's two feeders here within 250 yards and they come from one to the other and anyway it's one of my fun uh, funner morning time hunts this year I didn't harvest anything this year didn't see what I wanted to manage and harvest and I had a lot of work that had to be done and not a lot of help to do it but hey you know God bless America and the working man and speaking of that I'd like to thank my brother and my sister Tanya and Blair um, man guys those two people they really helped the most show through a rough week and helped them get to the next week and they always told me I could turn to them if I ever needed to and I needed to and they were there for me big time and I'd like to thank Belinda also because Belinda tries to help the best she can and thank you baby I really appreciate it and um, Blair, Tanya I love y'all both man and Belinda I love you too sweetheart so you know what a day now here's some of my favorite morning time pictures on the lake I just love watching the sun come up over the lake uh, that's when we had a little snowstorm down here in the state of Texas early in the morning. Uh, sometimes it floods and it gets like that. And sometimes the mornings can be straight and flat. But that's one of my favorite pictures right there, as a matter of fact. And that dog was standing four foot of water. There's an early morning bass. There's some more early morning sunshine and the lily pads. Look, that's my rush hour traffic right there, guys. I love it. And there's a rainbow, promise of a better day tomorrow. There's a little moonshine still out. There's a little darkness on the way. Hey, it can't all be. A little snow shine, snow up here on my porch, up here on my boat. There's a 1972 Ranger right there. Uh, you know, it's just some beautiful scenes I like to share with y'all. It's happened to me in the morning time, some of my better experiences. I love my friend Ken, my Uncle Garland, my dad, me, Lake Fork, Lake Sam, Rayburn. Oh, had to love Pooh and those ducks right there, didn't we? And first buck ever killed on that ranch. And if we got in, we didn't know.